sensitive data exposure, it is one of the primary use cases for our customers, which is why we actually devoted an entire dashboard for it, for sensitive data exposure. Here is a dashboard that can help uh, monitor all of the APIs that are leaking sensitive data at any point in time. So this is a dashboard that is typically used by risk and compliance teams, um, uh, chief data office teams, for instance, uh, within large enterprises to monitor the state of their external facing APIs and, and monitor it in real time, which of their APIs, if any, is leaking any form of sensitive data. Um, so as you can see here, um, over a two week range, three APIs, a collection of three APIs and a total of about 26 endpoints within them are leaking sensitive data uh, have been found based on the sensitive data expressions that are configured in the product. Um, so let's take a look at them. As if you may remember from the uh, earlier dashboard, the get accounts account ID transactions is the same um, endpoint that we looked at in the API inventory page as well. So here is where it is aggregating that info in the sensitive data exposure. And as you can see, it is flagging the Swift code uh, and it is flagging the number of transactions that was seen uh, with that um, identifier in the request. And above and beyond that, it actually shows um, how the leakage happened or the exposure happened. So sources represent uh, where in the API request or response that exposure happened. So as you can see, the exposure predominantly happened in the response body. So 44% of these many transactions actually leaked um, the sensitive data in the response body. Uh, a third of the requests um, leaked it in the request body and about a quarter leaked it in the URI itself, in the incoming URI itself. And these are the response codes. So it looks like most of this leakage actually happened in, in 200 OKs, not even error messages. So here is, an example where we typically see leakage um, in error messages. Um, that's a frequent place for inadvertent data exposure to happen to external audiences where the error messages are often too verbose and leak internal identifiers from um, your internal MongoDB database or your Elasticsearch database. And these are of um, um, these are of debugging or support need, but not really of uh, end user needs. So those are inadvertent data exposures that the product often finds. And it goes on to essentially uh, discover um, where the leakage or exposure happened to. These are the organizations uh, from which the client traffic actually originated. So these represent the um, ISPs or the organizations to whom the IP addresses belong that the client requests came from. So as you can see, these were the, uh, so if these are requests that are coming over, let's say your ISP like Comcast or at and those would show up here. Or if you're getting requests from a B2B partner, uh, your partner name will essentially show up here. And these are the IP addresses um, that are coming from those organizations where the exposure happened to. Um, so, and from this page, you can actually jump deeper into the specific transactions. If I do a view details here, it will take me right into API inventory and into the specific um, uh, endpoint that the leakage actually happened. At. And in the other dashboards like sensitive data exposure, you can actually view the sensitive data based on specific APIs. That's also a common use case that we see where a customer wants to be able to see sensitive data ex exposure that is happening in a particular API or a, a bunch of particular uh, APIs. For instance, if I, may, if I wanna see uh, exposure that is happening only in the FTX application, I can do this and it will filter this page to just show me the endpoints within the FTX app that are uh, exposing uh, sensitive data. <clears throat> 